Hey everybody, Josh Hannabury here, Truck Focus Podcast. Uh, super excited for today's episode. Um, I have a over-the-road legend and probably the most positive-minded professional driver I've ever talked to. His name's Chris Quinn. Super, super nice guy, super knowledgeable, super grateful that he joined the podcast today. So stay tuned. Here we go. Good day, everyone. Welcome back to the Truck Focus Podcast. On today's episode, I'm super excited to introduce to you Chris Quinn who's honestly has to be the most positive-minded professional that I've met. Um, and it's cool. You'll learn through this episode just kind of how we cross paths. Um, but he is a professional that operates over the road. And I was just blown away hearing his story. So I'm really excited to introduce him to you guys. So I first learned of Chris, like I mentioned, on social media, actually in a Facebook group. And each day, <laughs> it's just empowering. So each day, Chris shares a positive message, something along his travels, just to be really uplifting to the industry. Um, so it's really exciting for me to introduce such an expert to our, just our following, because he's a perfect example of what I try and highlight every day in our industry. Um, and it's just nice to see the impact he's having on different people's lives. So welcome to the podcast, Chris. Thanks so much for being here. Hey, Josh. Thanks a lot for having me. I really appreciate uh, this opportunity. Absolutely. Um, so kind of get us started. Who are you? Who is Chris? And I guess what makes you tick? What makes you you? Well, I've learned a long time ago, and this goes back over years and years. But um, I guess I guess being positive, it beats the heck out of being negative. And so I, I try to bring that every day. But being positive, it's something you, you practice. I practice it every single day. Um, what makes me me? Well, I've got a sense of humor. You can't maintain your sanity out here without a sense of humor, you know? Um, even if it's like, oh my God, why the hell did he do that? You know, that sort of thing. But I mean, you know, sometimes there, there's a chuckle. You've got to maintain an open mind. I try to. Um, and as, you know, as, as, as rushed as we are sometimes, Never take that too seriously because at the end of the day, if you rush, chances are you're going to make mistakes. Um, I've got some other things written down here. Um, what makes me me? I've never, I've never been asked that question. It's <laughs> a good uh, question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I've got love. I've got love and kindness for my fellow human beings, whether they're drivers, rookies, seasoned drivers, or the people, shippers, receivers people in the office that we meet in our honorary work. I've, I've got empathy for them. I try to be, now sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but I try to be the nicest professional driver that they're going to deal with that for that within that 24 hours. Now, it could be a young clerk at a flying day or a pilot. It could be a waitress. It could be a tire tech, a truck tech. You know, it could be anybody. But of course, well, the police officers, yes, that's a big one too. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. But, uh, yeah. but yeah, I just try to be the nicest guy that, that they're ever going to meet in the course of their day. And it's like, wow, that's cool. You know, because when I, when I walk up, I'll, I'll tell you something. I always look for a name tag. So this happened in Alexandria. I know I'm starting the story early, but anyways. That's awesome. So I, I go up, I'm doing a little stop in Alexandria heading up I-94 North. And so I'm rushed. I go get my, my colas. I love Coca-Cola. Get my colas from the fridge. I come down and I put them on the desk in front of her. And I'm fishing for my wallet. So, so I'm looking down at my wallet to get out my money because I'm in a little bit of a rush. And she says, uh, I said, good morning, sunshine. How are you doing? And so there was a pause. She said, beautiful little blonde thing. And she, um, and then I happened to look up and get her and saw her name tag. You know what her name was? Sunshine. <laughs> I, could, I said, I never even saw your name tag, honey. She says, I thought you saw my name. So that gave us about five minutes of a real positive interaction there. And it put nice. a, a good fit on both our days. You know, it's little things like that, that just, they, they, they can really, really make it. Yes. You know? Yeah, yeah I agree. And. I can totally get that from your words, from the photos. And again, we've only had one other conversation and I just, yeah, I appreciate authenticity and I appreciate when someone's genuine and those are characteristics you definitely have. So that's yeah. awesome. 
Um, so how did you first get into the transportation industry? Go far back well, or as close as you want to go, but kind of paint that picture okay. for us. Well, I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shorten it up. We talked a little bit about that earlier, but I was doing a variety of unrelated jobs. However, I did have a class three were there for about 25 years. Now that means you can drive a straight 10, like a dump truck, okay, with air brakes and that. And I was driving, I was working for United, no, not United Towing, um, CAA. So I'm driving down the road on my way to my next call and the semi passed me. I'm in St. Boniface. So I said, you know, I'd like to drive that. The guy with me says, you can't ever drive that. <laughs> what are you crazy? You're too old. You know, now mind you, I was like 43 at the time. No, no, I'm not too old son, you know, but anyway, so one thing to get me to do, to do something is to tell me I can't do it. So I went out, I picked the school out, found out what was going to be involved, six week course, paid the money. And I was the oldest guy in the class. And I was partnered with this uh, young guy who has been driving his daddy's grade truck since he was 15. Great, went through the CDL. There were like nine of us or 10 of us in the class. He and I, we'll call him Tony, for example. Okay. Tony and I were the only two that nailed our CDL on the first try. Good job. Everybody else needed three tries or more. Wow. So I, I, that was a point of pride with me, definitely. Yes. Um, got a job, started running to Chicago right off, right out, of, right out of the gate, started running the States. <laughs> and I've been running the U.S. ever since. Um, I, I had to start, to start a driving team, found out the team wasn't exactly for me. So I found after that, uh, went by the wayside, I found a company who was willing to take a chance on me driving solo. So, and that's what I've been doing ever since. You know, Incredible. you have you, you can't keep that rig running 24 seven, even though dispatch would like you to. <laughs> but, and here's the thing, when I say be nice, and, and I try to be, this also means your bosses, your coworkers, dispatch. Because I'm one driver. My company has like 30 trucks, 25 to 30 trucks. So they got 25, uh, 30 people like yelling in their ear. I don't want to be the one of the ones yelling in their ear. Right. So yeah. you, you just take everything. You treat somebody how like like how you would want to be treated, I guess. Totally. You yeah. know. Um, and I just turned 65, so this is my 20th year behind the wheel. Incredible. I thought I'd maybe do it for five, six, eight, eight years. 20 years later, I'm still in Laredo waiting for a load. <laughs> 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 now I've been waiting here for 20 years, but. Um, I've got a lot of other loves to do besides trucking. Um, I do what I love and I love what I do. However, when I'm at home, uh, I love my music, got out my music, even on the road. And I, I, for years, I've been a huge uh, Microsoft flight simulator guy. Okay, awesome. I, I actually taught, taught myself to fly an airplane over the course of like nine years in the earlier versions of FS9, only to be actually granted the privilege and honor of flying that exact same aircraft out of, uh, just, it's a little airfield called Centennial, K-A-P-A, -A, just outside, just south of Denver International. Wow. And I was the only non-pilot. My cousin and her hubby, they were in the backseat, they're pilots. And I had a, a CFI who's only got like 45, 40,000 hours, about 45 years experience. I was the only guy, not a pilot, and I'm the one flying the thing. And I flew <laughs> it from takeoff to flight, the landing. Wow. Again, crowning achievement. And I was trucking at the time and one of my loads got screwed up. So I'm, and I have family in Denver. So, okay, now I'm going to hang out with y'all and we'll go out for pizza and we'll do this and that and everything else. She talked to her CFI that was, uh, his name is Tom, that she was in partnership with in an aircraft leasing firm. And I actually got to fly, fly that. It was a beach debonair C-33. It was a, uh, Considered a high performance aircraft as far as general aviation goes. Yeah, that was. Wow. <laughs> yeah. We even now you've heard of Dog the Bounty Hunter. Yeah. Well, they had that show, right? Yeah. Well, one of their one of the homes they had was in Boulder. So here we are doing a pylon turn, looking down at Dog the Bounty Hunter's mansion. <laughs> and, you know, crazy. and so and so like you know, and so uh, and you know, so everybody else. Me, I'm just trying to keep the damn thing in the air. Everybody else is taking pictures. <laughs> It was just, it was so cool. Wow. It was just so cool. So again, that may not have come about had I not been trucking. 
because yeah. I used to go down through Denver a lot, still do. So, uh, yeah, it just, I'm open to so many different experiences and uh, that's kind of what makes me, me. I look forward to like tomorrow obviously has arrived yet. I look forward to tomorrow. Right. Today's been a great day. Tomorrow, even though I'm going to be under load, you got to do stuff with that, but I'm going to try to get loaded and then start making tracks for, for Calgary, your neck of the woods. Nice. Okay, good. Good. Yeah. 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 I hope you like avocados because that's what I bring it for you. <laughs> that's awesome. So in your travels then, I know you're stateside yeah. a lot. Um, so do you have kind of, I didn't know that about Denver. So that's incredible. That's a, an incredible yeah. story. Yeah, that was, that was, that was a unique situation. Really. Yeah. Unique. So I guess, is that one of your favorite spots to go or where's your kind of your um, favorite landmark? Yeah, when, when, when I can, um, there's really not a lot of places to park in Denver and every place you park, you got to pay like at the TA and La uh, just outside Lakewood, you got to pay like 25 bucks a night. Um, so I like to try to blow through Denver. Uh, but my cousin and her, and her hubby also have a place down in Yuma. So I'm looking to maybe next time I'm in Yuma, I'll be able to go by and visit them there. My uncle Harry is in, is in, uh, Colorado, but I try to get to get to see them when I can. Nice, but in this job, nothing is ever guaranteed, you know. So, yeah. Well, and even with that outlook, the fact that nothing's guaranteed, but like I mentioned in the very beginning, you're by far, Chris, the most positive, straight. Like you see the bright picture. You don't see like sure fog happens, sure like things that we don't want in life happen, but you have such a yeah. clear lens on staying positive at the decision. So how do you do, in your own words, of course, how do you find you keep that outlook 20 years in? Obviously, you've been well, through some stuff, winter storms, all that good stuff. You, you, how do you, you keep learn that? something. You, okay, thanks. You learn something very early, or at least I have. You got to learn how to roll with the punches. Now, maybe a punch isn't directed at you. It's a circumstance. It's a situation. Whether it was um, enacted by a fellow driver or or a situation or dispatch or an office worker or something, we're the only ones that really can bank on backup. Like we, we are our own backup, literally. So that's why it helps to get talking to my brothers and sisters on the highway. When I have a chance, meet for coffee, you know, maybe go for nail when we're off duty and just sit down and just talk shop. You know, you learn so much. And, um, I'm only been doing this 20. I've met guys that have been doing this like 45, 55 years. Wow. So, you know, you think I got stories. Huh? <laughs> but a lot of them, and they're, they're more than happy to share their stories. Absolutely. So, and you learn so much about the industry. Like, hmm, I never thought of doing it like that before. So right. there's, it's always a learning curve, you know? So keep an open mind. That's what I try to do. And to that point, I always look forward to the next day because I know it's going to be a brand new day. It's like a clean slate. Right. Okay. Yeah. And just we all we can do, all I can try to do is make it make it another really really good day. You know, incredible. Yeah. So with that said, you shared one thing mm -hmm. that I don't want to take too much away from what you're saying, so I'm loving okay. it. But what advice would you give then to brand new CDL, similar experience to your first starting out, where someone yeah. trusted you to go solo? What kind of advice would you share with someone in that mindset or in that I guess stage of life? Okay. Well. It's good you ask that. that. That's always been a big, a big thing in our industry because we have so many new people coming in. In a lot of cases, the training isn't where it's supposed to be. I was pretty fortunate, but like I tell all the new guys, it doesn't matter if you know you, you could have this amount of training, that amount. Your training is going to start. School starts when you hit the road on your own, right. or with your training driver or something. Yes. Um, learn all you can. Ask questions. If you're ever told, to, told well, that's a stupid question. Don't ask that of me anymore. Then find somebody different and ask that question because the only stupid question is the one that you never ask. That's right. And try to get, like, there's so much in this business from border crossings to, like, I'm a driver. I'm not a mechanic. I'm learning more and more about the rig every time I, I take it around the road. But I, I don't turn wrenches. I'm not qualified to do that. But I am qualified to drive it. That's right. Yeah. So... So, you know, you, you just got to learn to work with people in your realm that are, that are helping to keep us on the road, whether it's dispatch, whether it's the boss back in the office, whether it's a trainer tech or a tire tech that's having a really, really bad day, stuff like that. And you just, 
go the extra mile for your brothers and your sisters. You know, you may not even know their know their names. Right. Have a smile for them. You know, and uh, like don't like stare at them because they're <laughs> thinking you're all creepy and that. But have a smile, have a wave. You know, yes. a lot of times we'll just nod. You know, I'm coming out of the flying day. The other guy's going in. He's going to get his stuff, and we're both heading totally different. We'll just you know he'll nod to me. I'll nod to him. We're, we exchange a greeting. You know, not, maybe not even verbal, yeah. but this is and. Often we'll wave to each other on the road as one guy's passing the other. So that's it's a brotherhood and a sisterhood. It really is. I know a lot of female drivers. I am all behind them 100%. Some some of the older guys aren't, but I've seen the way some of these ladies drive, and oh boy, they are hell on wheels. Yeah. Really, really, really good. And all yeah. they all I want is a fair shout out of it. So you know I'm I'm willing to do that absolutely. So it's it's great meeting people like that. Because back in the day, when I was starting out, there were so few, like 20 years ago, there were so few females, women behind the wheel. Right. Now there's, there's getting to be a lot more. Yeah. And they're driving solo. You know, they can do a pre-trip and this and that and, and work with the load, secure the freight um, just as well as we can. You know, so again, they're part of that brotherhood and sisterhood that I spoke of earlier. And that's, that's very, very important, I think, to maintain that. But Agreed. With that comes that mindset you have to want to. Yes. You see, and, and you know, so. Yeah, it's incredible. And I think some of that, well, most of that advice is transferable to experienced drivers too. Oh, yes. Right. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. That way you're not yep. ever in the mind. Like I hear it often. Oh, I've done that. I've done that. I know that. And it's like, okay, well, things yep. change every day, every moment. It yep. could be a, a different angle, a different piece of equipment, whatever it is. But yeah, I think that's, that's important. Right. To definitely keep that focus as well. Yeah, and, and just like I said, and that comes back to keeping an open mind. Yeah. You know, no, this is the first day, this is the first day of the rest of your life, kind of. So, and I'm not being modeling here, but it's it's a brand new day. Uh, and you have, a, like, I have a large part to say in how this day is going to go. Yes. Now, yes, I'm going to have to deal, but it's how I deal with stuff that comes over the course of the day. You know, you can get all antsy and anxious or... Put a smile on your face. Say, you know what? How bad it is? How bad is it? Like, cause, because mm-hmm. nobody died. So, as far as I'm concerning, I'm concerned. This may be a problem. This isn't maybe that bad. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. You know. So I mean, it's it's about trying to maintain that focus. Yeah. And like I said, the sense of humor really, really helps. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's incredible what laughing and just the release of like yep. bad energy, whatever you want to call it. But yeah, keeping a clear yeah. perspective for sure. Big picture thinking like you do is definitely important. So yep. what advice then would you share? Go wherever you want. I'm, I am I like that you re, you uh, mentioned law enforcement. I'm a big advocate for law enforcement myself. But yeah, me too. What, what advice would you share for our industry in general? So if it's a dispatcher listening, uh, owner of a carrier, an insurance professional, whatever they may be, what from a professional driver's perspective, what advice are you comfortable sharing that industry needs to hear? Well, I'm fortunate I work for, <coughs> pardon me, excuse me. I work for the best company I've ever driven for. And now this, this is, it's a two-way street. They like, they like my skills on the resume. They like the interview. And also at the same time, I'm like interviewing them, so I'm getting a good sense of them. And I've heard, yeah, you know, I, I could see, because I've worked for the good, the bad, the ugly, as most of us have who's been, who've been in this a bit. And none of those options are, are that good. These guys, it's a small company. It's family owned. Got about 25, maybe 28 trucks, maybe 30 at the most. Um, some are all the general population were just, you know, company drivers, but they take care of us. They listen to us. Everybody from the boss on down, if I need to call him up and discuss something, I can do so. Everybody's got an open door policy and we communicate. We're all part of the same team. It's just that the rest of my team is sitting back in the office in dispatch. Right. I'm the only team member that I can visibly see out here, but there's more than more than just me. There's like 20, 25 other guys out here. Right. And we're spread all over the, the like uh, over the US. So um but they they take care of it, they listen to us. And that's the that's the biggest thing. You know, listen to your drivers. Yes. Okay. Because if the driver is not happy, um, 
could be there, there, there could be a reason why. Um, I'm not putting blame on it because there are so many different things that come up in the course of an employer employee relationship. But see, the way I look at it is for me, they're entrusting me, the boss is entrusting me with slightly over a quarter of a million dollars of his hardware. Right. My truck is a 2020. I was driving her in 2019. Her name is Jennifer. She's a 20 Freedia, Freedliner Cascadia. Nice. I just picked up a brand new trailer. It's a 2019. And it's reefer. It's just beautiful shape. The rubber is in good shape. Everything is good. Like, So, I mean, this is the kind of stuff that I appreciate because they're going to give me hard, good hardware to drive. It's up to me to do something with it. Yes. They're not in charge of me in, you know, responsible for me getting this thing down the road. I am. So I know my responsibilities. And we, every trip we go on, we work through, at least I do. Um, just, I'm communicative. If I don't have anything <laughs> to talk to him about, sorry, then I just, I won't call him up because there's no need. Right. You know, they can see on the satcom where I am and what I'm doing. So, but yeah, it, it's, you know, be communicative, um, be supportive. Because this job is tough enough. We haven't seen our friends and family in like 35 days. I, my last trip into Winnipeg, I was out for 47 days. Wow. I was a bit ragged by the time I got back to Winnipeg. <laughs> yes, understandably. So I thought, I thought, okay, that's too much. But they know that they can tell by the tone of my voice. And they know that I've started to get a little afraid around the edges. So, okay, Chris, let's, let's get you home. You know, yes. so we did. I was home for about a week. Great. Got all my stuff done, and uh, and I'm back up. But I think I'm going to limit it to about thirty to thirty-five days. That's good enough. Incredible. You know, <laughs> and I got my friends and my friends and family. And I I call my mom. My mom is ninety-three years old. I call her multiple times a day. I even bought her the big map book, the twenty twenty-one uh, Rand McNally Trucker's Bible. We call it. Nice. So I so she's got this. She can follow me wherever the heck I'm going, and she and she does. You know, I always get her about, well, so are you, are you booking to be part of the dispatch team? Or what? <laughs> yeah, yeah but, pick me up this on the way. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But, uh, you know, it, missing those people, it's tough when you're on the road. Yeah. So my quality time is spending time with her when I get home. Also, my friends, uh, and just sitting down and just chill out and relax. And while I was gone, uh, good friends of mine, real good friends, they've... Uh, my best friends, husband and wife, they lost their house. There was an explosion and the house has got to be pulled out. This happened several days ago. So I've been calling them on a day. I haven't called them today yet, but they're doing an answer with all the insurance guys and the fire marshals and stuff. So right. they're pretty damn stressed out. And yes. the, home, the home, it was a little wartime home paid for. So my heart goes out to them. So I'm, I'm all, usually on the phone talking to somebody back in Winnipeg. Yeah. You know, it's just, but that helps keep me sane and that helps keep me connected. Being connected is also, I think, a very, very good part because it's, it's too easy to lose yourself out here. Yes. It is really too easy to give up, you know, the, the, the morals that you, that you live by or your personal credo or something like that. Way too easy for that to go by the board. Stay true to yourself. Totally. And everything, I'm a big believer that everything should then just fall right into place. You know, yeah. so yeah. When you mentioned okay, a so. quote, that was awesome, and because you that really ties in to a quote you said last conversation too mm -hmm. about the solution and the problem. Oh and yeah, I thought yeah. that was super powerful. Yeah, th this is this is something that I didn't I didn't hear this anyplace. I just you know when I'm doing the miles, I've got nothing but really other than watching the traffic. I mean, I'm just you sit here, you got a lot of time to think. So I'm thinking to myself, you know, we all have two choices. And this is this works for me personally. It may not be for anybody else. Don't know. But this is what gets me through the day personally. We have two choices. We can be either in, in whatever, choose whatever you want. I'm not talking politically. I'm not talking religiously. I'm not talking jobs. Just overall. Do you want to be part of the solution or do you want to be part of the problem? I choose to be part of the solution. Now, with that having been said, that means that because there, we're we're so divided these days in both countries, in the U.S. Mm -hmm. and Canada, yeah, that it really it really really pains me because I've been 
I've been coming down. I mean, I've got a vested interest down here. I've got friends and family down here. So, and I love the U.S. You know, I just love the U.S., love Canada. It's, it's where it's my stopping grounds here, you know? That's right. Um, but yeah, I choose to be part of the solution. Now, whatever that entails, that could be if everybody around you is griping, smile. If for, if for no other reason, then it'll maybe just tick them the heck off a little bit. But, you know, <laughs> yeah. Make them wonder what you're up to. Yeah. Um, but it never hurts, you know? Yeah. Um, and just try to be at any point in time. So you can look in the mirror, hold your head up and say, you know what, man, it has been a good day. And tomorrow's going to be a better day. Don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. But there may be a hailstorm coming, but <laughs> we'll try to do the best we can, as we always do. And just yeah. think positive, because if you do that, positive stuff is going to happen. It really, yeah. really does. And I've seen that time and time and time again on the roads on the highways because believe me if anybody needs luck out here it's us yeah and if we need good stuff to be happening it's us because we can find ourselves in so many a variety of different situations none of which are good at all right so we've got to make the best judgment time that we can at the time whether it's to pull over or okay i can maybe beat the storm whatever yeah but then you do your best but but don't have it as the be all and end all because if the weather thickens up and you really can't drive, then, you know, pull it over because no load is worth your life. And that's another thing. Yes. You yes. know, so that's where that, that little solution and problem saying of mine came from. And, and, and it's something I live by each and every day, every day. Absolutely. Because it's, it's what, what I found for me that works. Yeah. And I'm comfy there and I'm happy there. You yeah. know, that's incredible. Yeah, you mentioned again a couple of things that makes me self-reflect. I'm really a big advocate for that. And I used to work in northern Alberta in the oil fields, and okay. I'm, a, I'm a pretty happy-go-lucky kind of person. And yeah, I used to get just, I wouldn't say harassed, but teased to the max because I was always trying to be positive, trying to be that guy that yep. smiled and just yep. uplift a room. And in my head, I'm always like, you're going to mock me now, but you'll remember me later because something will happen yep. where you're like, man, yeah, that was really nice for him to do that. Or, hey, it yeah. makes me want to smile at someone, but I completely agree with that mindset. And I think yeah. it makes a big well, difference. See, that's it. Yeah. So especially it's, it's, you mentioned you're away from family and you're away from, well, some family. It's nice that you have family stateside too. But yeah, yeah a lot of people don't. A lot of people are away for 30, 45 days, whatever that period is. And yeah, they right. miss things back home. So, because my father- and it's and tough. Like, yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. It, yeah. It's tough. I use Facebook to stay connected. My, right. uh, my, uh, my uh, friends and family on that uh, truckers group that we, we belong to, uh, real good bunch of people. And I just, I, I use them to stay connected. To, that help, helps ground me. Right. That's in essence my, another, uh, uh, another section of my family that I spoke of earlier. Yes. So it all comes, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying, well, yeah, you are, but you aren't, but you are, but you are. No, we're all part of the brotherhood and sisterhood, man. We got yes. a big family. That's right. Yeah. You know, that's right. Yeah. So um, just kind of in closing, Chris, were there any final thoughts that you wanted to share just from the heart, from the road, anything that you're thinking about? Um, no, I think we pretty much covered everything that I was going to want to uh, want to do. Let me see here. Just, uh, yeah, just. Well, the thing is, okay, we, we, we always talk about mindset. Well, mindset, it's a state of mind. And you have to, you have to really buy in to this, to this mind like any other mindset. You just you got to buy into it, make sure it's for you, like, like me, like I do with the positivity. And then just run with it because nobody's telling me I can't. Yep. And I've run across people that, it may bug them because they don't totally understand it. I'm not asking them to understand it, nor am I providing them an explanation. This is just me. So if you're happy being you, let me go on my merry way, happy being me, and everybody's happy, right? Yeah. <laughs> in, 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 in essence. Yes. But yeah, um, yeah just, just um, and we, we so appreciate, my brothers and my sisters, we so appreciate all the, all the support that we, we get whether it's stated in Facebook, 
where there I see it, a billboard on a sign on the side of the interstate, just thanking us for doing what we're doing. Because we do have a difficult job. It's not impossible, but it sure seems like that sometimes. Yeah. But we just got to keep our chins up and we just got to keep focusing on that picture, getting down the road, doing our job. We do a, a dangerous job in a very dangerous environment. And it is not for every for everybody. And we'll probably tell you that, you know, we're we're not, nothing special, man. We just like driving. We like the scenery and blah, blah, blah. But deep down, I have the sense that I'm I'm helping basically keep both countries above water. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, and for me, that's a point of pride. Totally. You know, this started out just being a job. Now it's almost like a duty. You yes. mentioned the military before. So that's that's kind of how I look at it. So that's yeah. my, probably my pilot. My parting final thought for today. <laughs> Honestly, Chris, that's awesome. And to speak on that, I'm a big advocate. My 11-year-old son's an advocate, and we try and uplift just professional drivers. And essentials, it's a bad label because it's been exactly like you said, that keeping the countries above water, horse and carriage type timeline. Like it's not yeah. Yeah. that essential. The definition's not new. I just think the, the world has been able to really zoom in on, okay, wow. I know what a, like a shelf looks like empty. I don't want to experience that again. Who's bringing us this stuff? Okay, so That's let's right. keep that focus way beyond and way after because I think part of the pandemic highlighted that, but we have to maintain that level of awareness just to say, and Thanks. And you know what? We, we've got to keep pulling together. Yes. Okay, we're, we're, we're together. We're stronger than the sum of all our parts. Together, we are stronger. We're a strength. We can uplift each other. We can help each other. We can keep the good vibes going, if you will. Yeah. And then we'll all get through this. But dividing is not the way to go. It, 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 does, it doesn't really serve a purpose in my... Some people will think the opposite, but not, not in my world. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And uh, nor do I have illusion, any illusions of grandeur, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. Yeah. But, no, that's uh, awesome. Yeah. So, um, so just last question. Um, sure. There will be a lot of people watching this, listening to this, because Good. again, you're Great. you're a champion for our industry. Would you be okay <laughs> if people reached out to me and I put them directly in contact with you if there's questions or they just want to have a good conversation? Would you be okay with something like sure. that? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, absolutely. Now I didn't provide you a pic. Um, if you need to, we could talk off air about that, and I can I can try to get you on or whatever. I've, you know send it by email or something. I don't know what you're looking for there, but, but yeah, no, by all means, just using yourself because my job is up and down. Like today I'm off duty until tomorrow morning at 10, got to go grab a load. And then my day is going to be all about loading and trying to get down the road as far as possible. And I don't think I'll get 600 in, but maybe 450, 400, you know, nice. depends on yeah. how soon I can get, get my load out and on the highway. So right. when I'm under load, I've got a lot less time to do this kind of thing. Yeah. But I'm always on Facebook. I've got an internet connection no matter where I go. It's and that's the reason that my phone bill is like two hundred dollars a month because <laughs> right. I've got everything on it. Yeah. Um, so if anybody wants to email me, reach out or whatever, by all means. Okay. Absolutely. I've got no awesome. I've got no no problem with that at all. Okay. Awesome. And that's a big help because I know there's as people become more aware of professionals like yourself that genuinely care. I know people right. are going to want to reach out. So I just thought I'd ask. So that's awesome. Sure. No, okay. I don't have a problem with that. Just, just please bear in mind, in, in, in mind my timeline because it can be all over the map when I'm on the road. That's right. Yeah. And, and that's totally fair, Chris. So, uh, yeah. but yeah, honestly, thank you so much for coming onto the podcast today. You're because of you and professionals like yourself, this is really what drives me and my passion and my 11 year old too, who wanted to be on this yeah. one, but he's yeah. He's eating food right now. So, <laughs> but yeah, it's well, just, that's kind, of, awesome, that's kind so. of important too, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. But no, this is awesome, Chris. So thanks so much. I really appreciate you coming on. Well, you know what? And I want to thank you, Josh. This has been, I, this is my first ever, I've never done this before. And you made it so easy. And I've enjoyed our conversations of which we've had, we've had several. And I hope this doesn't mean that we're going to be out of contact because I think you're, you're a stellar individual, stand-up guy. I appreciate what you're doing. And you're one of these people that are kind of pulling everything together, you know, because you've got resources that I may not have on the road. So it's a lot easier for you. So you're just welcome to the team, my brother. 
Thank you so much. That really means a lot. That, that's awesome. So thanks so much, Chris. I really appreciate it. All right. You it. take care, Josh. You too. Bye. Okay. Well, that's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for joining. Um, I hope Chris brought as much value to you as he does to me. And yeah, just super excited that I could have Chris on the show. It was just, yeah, it was an honor. So thank you so much, Chris. Just keep doing what you're doing. You're being a massive um, positive impact and light in our industry. And it was just an honor to have you on the podcast today. So the Truck Focus podcast, we're all about connecting transportation industry experts to the industry to help create a pivotal change. And just stay tuned. we got lots of other really good experts coming on here right away. Um, I do ask that you subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you're watching this on YouTube, simply press the red button. Um, just the greater the following, the greater the impact. And if you're watching this on any other social media platform, um, I ask that you just like it, share it, let's spread the word. And yeah, so thanks so much again for just all of the support. And yeah, have a wonderful day. Bye.